Hey everybody, so last week I released a video about me looking at all the problems that this Commodore 64 PAL had and some of one of the main problems was that sometimes I would turn it on and I wouldn't get any power at all and I thought I tracked it down to this particular power supply so it only happens with this particular power supply and you know it's a it's not an original power supply it's a um, it's a it's a modern version and the thing is it's not that modern so this is a relatively by now older model I don't know maybe it's like five eight years old or something but it's still it's a it's a modern architecture is not the the really horrible original ones and it was a little dissatisfying because all I managed to do was well it happens sometimes with this one and it doesn't happen with an original one so I started using the original one but then I just kept thinking about it so this is actually a, a power supply. This is the one that is manufactured in Poland. And I don't know if it says it in here. Yeah, so this is manufactured by Electroware. So I decided, why not? I'm gonna send them an email and I asked their opinion about what was happening there. Is that normal? So they confirmed. So first of all, they reply right away, which is great. I uh, really appreciate that, especially knowing that I hadn't even purchased it myself. And yeah, they, they mentioned that this is definitely an older power supply. They have newer ones that you know, maybe they use better components or, or whatever, but still it should be fully functional. And so they mentioned a couple of things that kind of confirm something I was thinking about. So if we looked at this power supply, there's two parts to it, two main parts. And this over here is a Meanwhile IRM105. So this outputs uh, five volts DC at two amps and I, you know, this, this one is still a little confusing to me. So it, it, it has the, the, the two X five volts. I, I, I believe that actually means also two amps. Um, but then it also has nine volts in here. So I'm just going to assume that this outputs the nine volts AC, which is probably more like 11 volts AC. Um, because this should be able to do all of it itself the input to the mean well is uh oh yeah look the input of the mean well is all the way from 100 to 240 volt ac so you could use this both in a european and u.s power supply which is really cool so i'm not exactly sure how i haven't even taken it out i don't want to remove the um the the um heat gun the heat glue in here i was looking at the data sheet for the mean well and it has both over current protection and over voltage protection built in. So, I mean, there may not be very much more to this um, power supply than than that. Like, all, all, it looks like most of the protection is built into here. So I was wondering, is it possible that on this computer, there is something that when I turn it on, it causes a transient current that triggers this and causes it to pretty much shut off almost all the way. That's what we're seeing when I was getting no light on the LED, we were measuring 0.7 volts on what was supposed to be a five volt rail. So maybe there is something, and if so, the first thing that comes to mind is the capacitors related to the power supply or to the, yeah, to the power um, input. So I wanted to see if today we can explore that. Maybe you can measure some of that. And uh, I would love to hook up the oscilloscope and maybe see a spike of the current. I don't know if we're going to be able to capture that or not. And if so, we can take it from there. We can measure capacitors. I don't have any replacement ones because those are those big chunky ones for high voltage. But I have other boards that will probably have it in better condition. So anyway, I'm just getting ahead of myself. Let's just see if we manage to capture some of the, some of the times that I turn it on and we get no voltage on the oscilloscope. So the easiest place for this to grab five volts is I'm just gonna use the one of the LED um, leads and then ground directly to the heat sink because everything is nicely connected. And I have this already plugged in. So we see a green LED there. And I need to change the oscilloscope. Okay, so we're seeing voltage DC over here, and I'm just going to make it really slow. So we're going to capture, sure, we're going to capture, there you go, really slowly. So each of those divisions is 400 milliseconds, so we have several seconds worth. And if I turn it on, this doesn't happen all the time, so if I turn it on, 
that looked to be a solid five volts all the time. So I'm just gonna turn it on again. Yeah, that seems very solid. Yeah, unfortunately this wasn't happening all the time, so it's gonna make it more difficult. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And yeah, that looks rock solid. Yeah, that seems fine. There you go. So for a bit, the voltage stayed really low. And first there was a little spike. So now I'm really curious to see if this is because of a current problem. Yeah, look at that, it's doing that consistently. Well, not consistently, but it's definitely doing it. Let me put a cartridge, see if that happens even more. Yeah, that was fine. So now, unfortunately, it's working <laughs> most of the time. And it is true that other times I had turned it on, I didn't see the light come on at first, and then it came on. So that's exactly what we just saw there. There was like about a second delay. It's just that sometimes it doesn't come on at all. It's interesting if I turn it on, that was me turning it on on the power supply switch and the voltage off is a little different and the voltage on has that little step. But if I do it on the Commodore 64 itself, yeah, it's a little different there and that is instant, which makes sense. The, the, the power supply is it's already turned on and, and not putting that voltage, whatever capacitors it has are fully charged already. There you go, you did it again. But this time it doesn't stay at 0.7 volts all the time like it did last time. I'm not sure why. So what I would love to do now is measure, the same way that we're measuring voltage here, measuring current. But that's not as easy with a, with an oscilloscope. I would need to either have a current probe, which I don't have, or I suppose I could do something like put some kind of low, um, low resistance in series with the input and measure voltage drop across that. And that would indirectly measure current because if we're suddenly getting you know, three amps or you know, I guess the limit would probably be two amps to some amps coming from there, then we know that the voltage drop is gonna go, it's gonna be pretty high. But I don't have any really easy way to set that up. Unless, can I do something with a DIN connector? Yep, we managed to do that again. But it's pretty quick. After about a second, it recovers. Yep. So it's interesting that it's happening more now. Maybe it just needs to be warmed up. And when it's warmed up, it happens more. Either the, the power supply or some circuit in the Commodore. It's pretty consistent too. It's, um, it's about what, three, three divisions right there. Three times two, so yeah, 500, 600 milliseconds. So half a second. Oh, 
when it happens. It doesn't happen more often than not. Yep, there you go. Yeah, I think that's exactly half a second. Alright, so I just made this horrible contraption. Um, I'm going to test it first. So the idea is that this is just a pass-through of the 9 volts AC in yellow ground and then 5 volts uh, DC are going through here and I'll be able to put the oscilloscope here and measure voltage drop across that resistor. I chose something very small like 10 ohms. Maybe that's the little, I don't know. I've never done this before, so this is all in theory. And, but before I plug it in, I just want to make sure that we are getting the right values. So this is an example of when having these kind of helping tools helps, even if it's not for soldering, if it's just for holding some awkward cables in place. And because the base is heavy enough, it should hold it in place, okay? There you go. There you go. Okay. So, I'm going to plug it in. Okay, nothing is exploding. That's always good. Okay, so the AC voltage is fine. The DC voltage of... Okay, that's 5 volts. Oh yeah, it is 5 volts. I just wasn't holding it correctly. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to connect the oscilloscope this way. Just to measure voltage across that resistor. Okay. Right, so I have it backwards. Um, Really? We have that much of a... We have 4 volts drop in there? Which means we're not getting any... any voltage to the rest of the system. Yeah, barely anything. Alright, so the way to hook this up is to have one of the oscilloscope probes on one side of the resistor and the other one on the other side. And for now, I'll just display them both. Um, eventually, we can do a difference between the two of them, and that will show us exactly if there are any variations, any spikes, any things like that. So I realized that 10 ohms was too much. The voltage was dropping way too much, like we saw there. So I changed it to 1 ohm. And the other thing we need to watch out for is that these are not power resistors or anything like that. These are just whatever resistors I had in the drawer. So they're not intended to have a lot of current going through them. So. I don't want to have this on for more than a couple of seconds and they're probably going to heat up. So I have this on because this is before the switch. So I need to be careful. This is before the switch. So I have the power strip off. The LED is not on. So I will turn on the power strip on and off and then see what happens. So I'm going to switch to oscilloscope. I need more cameras. <laughs> okay, so there we have both channels. And if I turn it on, yep, we see. I'm going to stop it right away. I don't, I don't dare last more than a second or so, but yeah. We definitely saw there was a voltage difference, but not that much. So I believe the Commodore could probably work with that. So what was the... Yeah, so I mean, it's it's over four... It's four some volts. So let's see if we can do the difference between the two of them. Math menu, yeah. So we want... One minus two. There we go. Okay, so we get to see all three of them. So that happened there. I turned it on both. So the input from the 
power supply was really low, but I never saw a huge difference in the voltage between the two, which means there wasn't a huge current spike through it. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm either measuring it incorrectly or my whole theory of uh, why this is doing this is just not correct and it's something else. Let me try a couple more times. Yep, so same thing in there. So that happened again in there and again. Not seeing any big spikes in there. So at least as at least as far as this measurement goes, I'm just not seeing anything very obviously wrong with it. So the thing I was doing is looking, could a capacitor be faulty causing this, right? Continuing with the theory of the capacitors. And so looking at the schematics, most of these big capacitors, they are in the nine volt AC area, and that is not the one that is failing us. So on the five volt DC, the only one is that I'm seeing there, electrolytic one is C91, and it's, it's just this one over here. And I mean, just, it looks fine. There is something else about this board that is triggering this power supply into shutting itself down, because I believe that's what's happening. It's that, I don't think there's a huge short. We don't see any more current coming through, either a spike or not a spike. The difference between the voltages doesn't seem to go up. If there was a short, the we would see a pretty big difference because there's a lot of current draw, but we're not really seeing that either. So yeah, maybe there's something about this board that for whatever reason is triggering this. And you know, for all I know, this particular mean well power supply or sub power supply or, or just um, transformer here is very sensitive to that or is, is going faulty. So, but that makes me feel better about the, the PAL Commodore 64 and you know, hopefully, hopefully it's fine. So yeah, I was thinking of maybe swapping out some capacitors, but I don't think there's any point in doing that, at least not with the evidence I have. So given all of this, <laughs> if somebody has some ideas of things to test or what might be causing that, let me know. In the meanwhile, I've already been looking into some other Commodore 64 power replacements. Uh, Ray Carlson has uh, some for sale. So that's very tempting. I also saw some other ones, I forget the, the name. Um, but they look pretty good too. And, you know, maybe I was really pleased with, um, what's their name? Electro, Electroware. I was really pleased with their willingness to respond and, and to help me out. So I might try one of their newer power supplies, especially maybe this summer when I'm in Europe, I'm sure, uh, shipping will be cheaper then. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out in the lab with me, checking this out and I will see you next time.